If you want to progress in Darkness Falls, sooner or later you'll need to go and mine for advanced ores of titanium, plutonium and uranium. These ores are only found in the wasteland. Now, in my previous video I looked at what you need to do before going into the wasteland. That is linked in the description and is a guide on radiation, your gear, the zombie and demon and weapon related aspect. Let us start with two important mining rules in Darkness Falls. First up, auger or pickaxe. Similar to vanilla, even more with Darkness Falls, when mining in the wasteland, unless you have a death wish, do not use an auger. An auger tracks screamers faster as the heat map ticks over faster. An auger is for clearing terrain, a pickaxe is for mining and collecting resources. Another plus for the pickaxe is when using a pickaxe and an auger of the same level, you collect more resources with the pickaxe. The second rule is do yourself a really big favor and crouch. Like with vanilla, you will attract less attention when crouching. When mining with a pickaxe, you will generate much less heat than when standing up and mining, so you will get fewer screamers in the same amount of time. Now, in version 4.01, you can now see ore vein icons on the map. On the map of the wasteland, blue is for titanium nodes. You will see these icons appearing on the map as you explore. Then there is the light blue or the turquoise for plutonium. Then we have the dark or lime green for uranium. Digging under the rocks of these archons, you will find an ore vein. As you dig out further from that point, you will also find other nodes often connected to that primary resource. For example, if you find titanium, often you will also find at least one of the other two there connected to the titanium, just with a little bit of extra digging. When under the ground, titanium ore veins have the same texture as lead. Uranium looks like or iron ore veins. And plutonium, the ore veins have the same texture as nitrate. The three advanced ore nodes also have 5,000 hit points, so it takes a bit longer to mine them. Once your action skill increases to a high enough level, however, you can even mine some of those nodes with one hit. Titanium stacks with 10,000 ore per stack, while uranium and plutonium are 6,000 per stack. Now, we move on to the first method of mining. This is the surface or open pit method and is what most people tend to do when playing Darkness Falls. This is simply the means of roaming around the wasteland and looking for icons on the map, or hitting rocks looking for which node is actually in that rock. Once you find an ore vein rock, you can dig under it, and you will usually find an ore vein. If I'm running an open pit mine, I tend to bring along a generator and at least two 7.62mm turrets, which I set up outside the mine. I close up the mine at the top and put a hatch on, and also add a land claim block nearby so that I can pick up the turrets and the equipment later. While mining, any screamers are usually killed before they get too close. Mining during the day is usually fine, though at night, the wasteland can become quite hectic and many more radiated and high-level zombies will actually spawn, so be aware of that. If you don't want to use the 7.62mm turrets, then you can use the robotic turret as well. But you must change your tactics. Instead of closing up the hole, you must now leave it open. When the screamer falls down the hole, the junk turret will shoot her before she recovers from the fall. You can modify the junk turret in Darkness Falls with mods like the Rad Remover or the Full Auto Mod, the Laser Battery, and what is really great now in version 4 is that you can even add darts as ammo. So a robotic turret, without even any perk upgrades, can already do over 60 damage per shot. So it is a great backup option as well. The second method is the mine shaft. With this method, you will dig down from a biome outside of the wasteland. For example, you choose the edge of the desert biome, and you dig straight down to bedrock, and then a tunnel into the wasteland, and you keep going until you hit an ore vein. This could take a while as well, but the idea is that sooner or later, you are going to hit an ore vein. You can see the texture change if you hit an ore vein. And also, if you hit sand, then there's very, very likely ore in that point as well. In theory, as you are far below the surface, the AR doesn't see or hear you. In theory. However, the AR cheats. Very soon, zombies will cluster above you. 
two or three during the day, a lot more at night. As you mine, you will eventually get a screamer spawning and she will do the exact same thing. Now, an early mining dig around the bedrock area should not lead to any zombies digging down to you. You should be able to get away with a few stacks of ore. However, once you get to two or three screamers wandering around, they can at times get a bit aggro and even start digging. To help prevent this problem, here is a suggestion. When you find your first vein while digging in your tunnel, don't stop. Mark the points on the underground or on the surface and keep digging until you find another vein. Now you have two ore mines that are connected via the tunnel. Now you dig the one. Try not to dig too high. Stay on bedrock or just a few blocks a bit higher. If you get too high, then even the other zombies, not only just the screamer, will hear you and start digging. Of course, we are usually worried about the screamers. Now, unless you're using guard mode or debug mode, the question is, how do you know there is a screamer on the surface? There are three options when figuring out whether there's a screamer or not. First, you listen with your ears. Usually you can hear her unique sounds that she makes as she snoops around above you. Second, the hunter class has a new threat assessment skill. It allows you to see zombies on your compass. The third option, which you will probably likely pick up sooner or later, is to cheese the game. As you are crouching, if you crawl into a one block space, you can then view up into the terrain and see what is happening on the surface. You may feel that, hey, the AI is cheating, so I am going to as well. So you cheat and shoot the screamer with a silent weapon to shut her up. Yes, due to this mechanic, you can shoot through the ground, which is why I am saying it is a form of cheating. If you do not want to cheese the game, then once you hear the screamer, then leave the mining area and move to the next mine that you found earlier. Once you move, the AR that is not supposed to hear you will actually cheat and follow you and camp over your character at the next ore mine. Yes, very annoying. However, what I've found at this point is sometimes you will lose some of the zombies and sometimes the screamer will even get a bit lost. Now you dig this mine until it generates another screamer. If there is only one, then just leave it and keep digging. So either you switch between mines when the screamers rock up and start getting a bit noisy, or you shoot the cheating IR. By switching mines, it also allows your heat map to cool down a bit, and so you get fewer screamers as well. If you are just mining for some ammunition or tools and weapons, then you will be able to get a few stacks of ore without the worst thing happening. And this is the worst thing that can happen. At this point, either you get too high or you get too many screamers and they just start digging down to you. Once there is a hole, then that area above you is basically screwed. You see, whenever you are here at this particular location and you are digging, then the zombies will always cluster around that area above you and that means they will always fall into that particular hole. This is due to the AI knowing that you are there even when they shouldn't really know that you are there. So they fall in and they start digging. The only option that you have is to get out, go up the mine shaft, block up that hole that you've made. Very time consuming, very annoying, which is why some people say, screw it, I'm just gonna shoot them when they start sniffing around. Finally, another way to try and stay out of the reach of those zombies on the surface is to dig under the large wasteland mountains. These mountain or hills of rubble means when at bedrock, the surface is very, very far away. So you can't even hear the zombies anymore as they are so far away. This means you can dig down to bedrock and fan out from that point. Just cover the hole and make sure that no one's digging down or falling down the mine shaft. Of course, as I said, zombies will still congregate above you. Mining in the wasteland is not a simple black and white solution in Alpha 20. It is quite easy to follow these principles and guides and mine a few stacks of ore for your basic equipment. However, if you require a few days of mining because you need to upgrade your base to full titanium or something, the more time you spend in the mines, the more it can lead to problems. Let us not forget we haven't even spoken about the wandering hordes that can suddenly appear. However, I have hopefully provided you with some tips and a guide that will allow you to have a better understanding of the problems and then some tactics that will at least be used 
to run an efficient mining operation in the wasteland. If you have any Alpha 20 mining suggestions, please drop a comment below. Also, if you found the guide useful, please click the like button and I will see you in the next one for more Darkness Fall goodness.